Welcome to Electron Line. So let's try to understand Gauss's law just a little bit better. Let's say that we have a small point chart called Q, and let's assume that we put some Gauss's surfaces around it of various radii. So we have one with radius r1 and another one of radius r2. We also realize that any charged object, like we have Q there, will have electric field around it, and that electric field can be represented by electric field lines, which will emanate away perpendicular to the charge, perpendicular way, so in, in a radial direction outward in all different directions, represented by those red arrows. We can then define that the electric flux is simply equal to the strength of the electric field anywhere along any of these surfaces multiplied times the area of the surface, which then defines that the electric flux through a Gaussian surface of any radius is therefore constant because the number of electric field lines does not change no matter where you are, no matter how big your Gaussian surface is. A small Gaussian surface will have exactly the same number of electric field lines as a large Gaussian surface, so the electric flux remains constant. It's simply a product of the electric field strength times the area. So since the flux lines remain constant as you go farther out, the field gets weaker, but the area of the surface gets, gets larger. So weaker field times a larger surface, that product will remain constant, simply represents the amount of flux going through any of the different Gaussian surfaces. We should also remember that we learned in a previous video that the electric field of a point charge is equal to K, some constant, times the charge that emanates the field divided by the distance from that field or from that charge squared and k is defined as 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught where epsilon sub naught is that permittivity of free space. Now let's go back to the concept of electric flux. It's the product of the electric field strength, the magnitude of the electric field times the area of a surface through which the flux goes. So or the electric field goes. Then, if we take the electric field and define this kq over r squared, that came from this equation right here, and the area of a sphere is going to be 4 pi r squared, r of course being the radius of that sphere, and that sphere represents the Gaussian surface. We can see that the r's cancel, r squared and r squared cancel, so end up with kq times 4 pi, and then if we remember that k is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught, and we replace k by 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught, the 4 pi cancels out with 4 pi, and so we see that the electric flux is simply equal to the charge inside divided by epsilon sub naught. And knowing that the flux, electric flux, is defined as E times A, we then again get Gauss's law that E times A is simply equal to the charge inside the Gaussian surface divided by epsilon sub naught, the permittivity of free space, and A is of course the surface area of the Gaussian surface, and E is the magnitude of the electric field, which is perpendicular to the Gaussian surface at the surface of the Gaussian surface. We can also look at the electric flux as being equal to the product of the magnitude of the electric field times the surface area of the Gaussian surface, or we can then solve this for E and say that the electric field, magnitude of the electric field, can be defined as the electric flux divided by the area through which the flux passes. If we then realize that in any situation like this, the electric flux is always going to be a constant and is defined as the charge inside the Gaussian surface divided by epsilon sub naught, and that the area of the surface can be defined as 4 pi r squared, then if we bring the epsilon sub naught down, we can write this as the Q inside divided by 4 pi epsilon sub naught times r squared, and of course 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught can be written as K, which again gives us back the equation of electric field due to a point charge. And this is what Gauss realized that was able to go back and forth and go, ah, that makes a lot of sense now. I can draw a Gaussian surface around any charged object like that. I know that the flux of the surface will always be a constant. The flux is defined as the product of the electric field strength times the, the area of the Gaussian surface. And it's always equal to the charge inside the vi epsilon sub naught, which is simply a constant that never changes, which simply means that I'm able to find the magnitude of the electric field 
anywhere around the point charge by simply drawing a Gaussian surface around it and I can find out the electric field strength on that surface. And that was the key to Gauss's law. Now we're going to show you some simple examples to even further clarify how it's actually used and how easy it is then to find the electric field of any charge using Gaussian surfaces. And that's how it's done. Am I beating this dead horse? Yes. Uh, you're filming this. <laughs> I gotta watch what I say with your camera. 